Did you sign Congress's border deal? I have to study it. I'm not happy about it. It's not doing the trick. But I'm adding things to it. And when you add whatever I have to add, uh, it's all it's all going to happen where we're going to build a beautiful, big, strong wall that's not going to let criminals and traffickers and drug dealers and drugs into our country. It's very simple. It's very simple. We're building a wall. And now I'm saying we're finishing a wall. We just started a big, big section on the Rio Grande. You probably saw it. Some of you were there when they started. You went there. You didn't believe it. You went there. You see trucks all over the place. You said, hey, he's not kidding. I don't kid. I never cared about construction. I love construction. And I know how to do it for the right price. And we're getting a beautiful looking structure that's also less expensive to build and works much better. That's a good combination of events, because it was crazy what they were putting up. In fact, I happen to think that the walls that they were building were so unattractive and so ugly that walls got bad names, okay, if that means anything. But they were so ugly, with rusted steel and big ugly plates on top that were all tin canned. It's called tin canned, where they're wavy, because the heat makes them expand and contract, and they tin can. I said, why didn't you paint the steel? Well, sir, uh, we saved money by not painting it. I said, yeah, but it's going to rust. You have to paint steel. I've never seen I've ordered a lot of steel. I've never seen in my whole life steel come to me that was unpainted. This could only happen at the border. It wasn't me. It was our past geniuses. So uh, I can tell you that uh, am I happy at first glance? I just got to see it. The answer is no, I'm not. I'm not happy, but am I happy with where we're going? I'm thrilled because we're supplementing things and moving things around and we're doing things that are fantastic and taking from far less, really from far less important areas. And uh, the bottom line is we're building a lot of wall. Right now we're building a lot of wall. And you think it's easy? We're building in the face of tremendous obstruction and tremendous opposition from a small group of people. Now, one thing that happened that was, I think, very revealing, we had the biggest and best uh, border agents and experts come up and see the committee. And they said, more than anything else, you need a barrier, you need a wall. And the recommendation was unacceptable to the committee. So that tells you more than anything else. Any <laughs> I don't think you're going to see a shutdown. I wouldn't want to go to it now. If you did have it, it's a Democrat's fault. And I accepted the first one, and I'm proud of what we've accomplished, because people learned during that shutdown all about the problems coming in from the southern border. I accept it. I've always accepted it. But this one, I would never accept if it happens, but I don't think it's going to happen. But this would be totally other Democrats. Okay. Are you that you may um, amend and send back the proposed compromise, or that you may grudgingly accept it and then move forward? It's always nice to negotiate a little bit, right? So, you know, whatever you get. But I would hope that there won't be a shutdown. I am extremely unhappy with what the Democrats have given us. It's sad. It's sad. They're doing the country no favor. They are hurting our country very badly. Uh, but uh, we certainly don't want to see a shutdown. But you'll be hearing fairly soon. Uh, the bottom line is on the wall, uh, we're building the wall, and we're using other methods other than this. And in addition to this, we have a lot of things going. We have a lot of money in this country, and we're using some of that money, a small percentage of that money, to build the wall, which we desperately need. Mr. President, Not at this moment. We have our people over there now. I just got a report. Things are going well with China. Uh, China wants to make a deal very badly. Uh, I want it to be a real deal, not just a uh, deal that makes, you know, cosmetically looks good for a year. We have a chance to really make a, a deal, a real deal with China. We've never been in this position before. We've always been the, the lame duck, and we're not the lame duck anymore. We've gone up tremendously in value as a country, in economic value, tremendously. Larry, we've gone up what, 11 trillion, 14 trillion, and China's gone down close to 20 trillion since we started this whole worst performing stock market in the world. Say it. China, worst performing stock market in the world. 
Has anybody ever heard of Larry Kudlow? <laughs> that voice, I hear that voice, and you think money, right, Larry? <laughs> So uh, is, I didn't. I didn't even know that. That's uh, some China. He said is the worst performing stock market right now in the world, and we don't want that. We want China to do what we want. But and that's because of us. And we have to be one of the best performing stock markets. But we are the best performing country, and we have a lot of potential for further growth. So we're doing very well over in China. Our people are there. You know the people very well. Uh, and I think uh, we're going to have some good answers. You know, I, I think uh, either way, I'm happy. I'm happy either way. I could live receiving billions and billions of dollars a month from China. China never gave us 10 cents. It was always the opposite way. Now they're paying billions of dollars a month for the privilege of coming into the United States and honestly taking advantage of our country. So we'll see how it works out. But at some point, I expect to meet with President Xi, who I have a lot of respect for and like a lot, and make the parts of the deal that the group is unable to make. That's the way deals happen. Well, will the March 1st deadline slide, do you think? Well, thus far, I've said, as you know, the tariffs tick up for us. In other words, we take in much more money because the tariff, and there's nothing they can do that's comparable. So it's not like tit for tat. The tariffs kick in. They go up. Right now, they're paying they're paying 25 percent on 50 billion dollars, okay, and they're paying 10 percent on 200 billion dollars. So we have 250 billion. We have 267 billion dollars that we were very nice about, and we're not taxing. On the 200 billion, we're paying the 10 percent. The 10 percent or 200 billion goes up to 25 percent on March 1st. And so far, I've said don't do that. Now. If we're close to a deal where we think we can make a real deal and it's going to get done, I could see myself letting that slide for a little while. But generally speaking, I'm not inclined to do that. Okay? Sir, are you aware of the deal? Would you consider declaring a national emergency to build the wall? I consider everything. I'm considering everything. You know, we already have national emergencies out there. You know, President Obama, President Clinton, President Bush. They've declared many national, this is not unique, they've declared many national emergencies. Many, many. Uh, and you have some out there that we can use in addition to one that we can declare if we want to do it. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyway, Bloomingdale's pulled a shirt off a mannequin Aww. bearing the words fake news after a triggered reporter tweeted a photo saying the shirt delegitimizes hardworking journalists. I'm not sure how a shirt on a dummy does that. I wear a lot of shirts with slogans, and this dummy has no impact on anyone. I actually own an Anarchy in the UK shirt, and I've yet to topple a government yet. But this isn't really about shirts. It's about the modern spineless corporation, cowed by a tweet, reacting like dandelions in a strong wind. The spokesperson said, quote, We apologize to anyone who found this T-shirt distressing, as if distressed shirts are the problem. But as you know, once you apologize, you just egg on those who are bored. Another member of the press safety patrol tweeted to Bloomingdale's that its apology wasn't sincere. Please try again, the tweet dripped, as if a thousand apologies could ever satisfy those who sniff fear. So good job, Bloomingdale's. Today, one dummy in a storefront window is cold and topless, while another dummy scores a scalp. I can hardly wait to see where this is headed. I saw a mannequin in Soho wearing fishnet stockings. Fishnets! They're used to trap fish. What kind of message does that send our youth? Mm. Strong finish there. All right, Juan, I'm going to do your job for you today. Thank you. All right. Don't be wrong. But Greg, but Greg, last night a reporter was shoved at a Trump rally by a surly <laughs> drunk who was shouting fake news. Could this shirt have contributed to that? To which I say, no, Juan, they never saw the shirt. And if you notice, it's a Trump supporter holding back that drunk jerk. So now I can move on to another guest. Yes. <laughs> no. I, I, I played Is one. that your point? Yes. I wanted, I wanted to undercut your point. Well, no, I think it's very real. I just hope, I hope you understand that people can be offended. Like, for example, this business that's going on right now with, is it Katy Perry shoes? Yes. That look like blackface. Right. And then people say, hey, that's offensive, and so then they pull it. I mean, there's certain things that you don't want. It's a weird-looking shoe. Yeah, but, Juan, you're not offended by a fake news T-shirt, are you? 
I don't like it if that's what you're asking. But you're not offended by it. I don't buy it. it. No. Okay. I wouldn't buy it. That's yeah. exactly right. That's the long test. But I think, but I think that when you're talking about the kind of suggestion, by the way, this came from a local New York City TV reporter. And then another reporter, and then everybody else goes. What people, what people are reacting to is the enemy of the press thing, right? Okay. But you know what? The thing is, Kennedy, you are uh, an operator of sarcasm. Sure. You could be wearing the fake news shirt ironically. Yeah. You could actually be wearing it. On a it news broadcast. On a news, yes. Kind of as a symbol against Trump. Mm -hmm. I'm wearing fake news because I think it's a joke. It's one of those phrases that has been inserted into our modern lexicon. And that's okay. And it's funny to poke fun of things like that. And that's exactly what they're doing. It's not a Trump 2020 campaign. Yeah, not a blooming. Dales, definitely. No, it's all it's doing is is showing sarcastically that this phrase is ubiquitous, and it's making fun of that. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. I, I do have a problem with the outrage and the apology. Like, I'm so offended that you're taking aim at hardworking journalists. That's not the intent. No. And that's not, and if fashion does startle people, if it does jar you a little bit, good for them. That's what it's supposed to do. Fashion is supposed to be unapologetic, like Tell Dolce & Gabbana. It. Dolce & Gabbana make fun of everyone. They make fun of everyone, and they don't care if you're Selena Gomez or Ariana Grande. They will make fun of you, which is great. There's not enough of that in the world. There's not enough pointing out absurdity. There's too much apologizing and too much easy offense, and I'm done with it. All right, Kennedy. Morgan, it's true, though. It's like you look at this. It's, it's not a Trump T-shirt, and still the reporters are, like, offended. Yeah, I think that the untold success story in all of this is for Bloomingdale's, actually. They responded to the treat right away. And I love Bloomingdale's. I think they have excellent customer service. I tweeted uh, them about is, my shoes. This is like terrible. No, I think it's good. They, they respond to their customers. That's right idiotic. Away. They should not be on Twitter. She because loves they, Bloomingdale's. I know what she's doing. Favor. I, I know what she's doing. They okay. responded to my right, how about this? I got bad shoes. All right, how about this? I had new shoes. Let's, and let's, let's, let's put the shoe on the other foot. foot. Let's say you say something on the five, right? Yeah. And that because that one person out there in outer space is offended by and they and they con and they they contact Fox and Fox goes we are so sorry that Morgan Ortega's wouldn't you be pissed off isn't if they if they didn't support you isn't that called media <laughs> no but that's what my point is my point is companies are no longer standing by anybody no I think Blooming yeah. is awesome and they have good customer service you are this is so selfish of you you are oh gosh that's so discount. Greg you know what it is I was going to get this shirt but I don't look good in yellow so I, I didn't buy it but this is about the that's reporters your mom said. This is the, the reporters who can dish it out, but they can't take it. Think about all the industries that reporters have attacked. Mm -hmm. The NRA, the military, the police department, the NFL, Fox News, talk radio, all this stuff. The minute you say anything about their industry, they lock it down. You can't criticize right. them. How because dare they you? have to maintain their status, and if their status is threatened, they run a mob at you. Yeah. All right.